Hey guys, welcome back to the outfit. So we are on the way again to the Ningaloo coastline. Yeah, so you guys will remember when we were here last, it's absolutely stunning. We had perfect bluebird weather when we were here last time. This time it's a little bit cloudy today and it's been really windy the last few weeks. So hopefully we can get a bit of a gap where it's not too bad and blustery. Uh, it's not as hot as we thought it was going to be, so it's quite a nice change, I guess, from up north. We've just been listening to David Annenbar's new book. Uh, you know, the documentary came out at the same time. Just been listening to that on Audible, which is pretty cool. And uh, now we're just going to get cracking into a bit of a drive. There should be lots of dirt road sand and corrugations and stuff, and then we'll uh, take you with us. That's better. <laughs> well, we knew it was going to be windy, but we didn't expect it would be this windy. We're on the most exposed side of the Ningaloo at the moment, so that might be the worst. Hopefully, fingers crossed, we will be staying on the other side. So we just need a coffee break right now, and we'll carry on afterwards. For those who don't know, yes, we're still using our back press. Will be a very expensive delivery. Yeah. This is the sort of stuff that'll kill a dolphin. So it's gonna kill it. So we've arrived at our campsite for the evening. Still super, super windy and a bit cloudy, but I'm gonna head out there and see if I can get us some dinner. But there is, because it's the Ningaloo side where the reef is, there's a lot of limitations to what I can gather in terms of fish. So no reef fish, basically. Um, so no parrotfish, coral trout, no types of cod, all the demersals. So really I can only shoot like cephalopods and pelagic fish. So maybe I'll get like a queenie or something like that, but overall be cool to see some turtles because apparently it's mating season. So I think I might just be in snorkeling mode anyway.
So today's dive on Ningaloo Reef was more of just a nice snorkel, which was neat. So just looking at all the pretty parrotfish, things like that, and um, saw three sharks, one of which was a little white tip reef shark, which circled me twice. Not sure if I got that on uh, camera, but we'll see. And the last shark I saw was, I think, a great big grey reef shark, or grey reefy as they call him around here, and he was asleep under a rock. I couldn't actually see his face, but I had to be really careful filming him because I didn't want him to just like charge out of there and latch onto my face. What else did I see? Oh, a little um, a cuttlefish, which was pretty neat. So I tried to get the camera in front of him and see if that turned out. So no fish that you can actually eat. I did see three great big mullets, but the time by the time I dived, they just shot off like little torpedoes. <laughs> So we're gonna eat a one fillet off a parrotfish and a relatively small um, stripy Spanish flag. So I got those yesterday in the Gulf. So we're gonna eat that and Ange just gonna cook a curry for us. And the best part about camping. <laughs> oh. <laughs> it's breaking your pan. <laughs> Too strong. <laughs> Too strong. We didn't think that would happen. Okay, well. Mm. I'll fix it. All this, all this crap's from Indonesia too. How is that for a kitchen view? I guess with the dunes shifting, it makes it harder to access these spots. So it feels like really secluded and private, like our own private beach. It's such an amazing spot. So we went on a little walk and we spotted some turtles in the distance. So I guess Chris will go spare fishing first and I'll join him later for a little snorkeling adventure because last time we were here there was like turtles everywhere. And at the moment it's turtle mating season so we don't want to visit to disturb them. But I still want to see some turtles in a while. So yeah, breakfast first and jump in the water.
Yeah, big fish. I um, had more meat on it than I thought it was going to, which is nice. Quite a thin fish, but super, super powerful. I think it's called a permit, but from what I've read about a permit, they only grow to about 80 centimeters, and that's <laughs> over Look. 80 centimeters. And I've seen permits uh, go past me uh, in gutters four times that size, and I knew not to take the shot because it just looked like such a powerful fish. In fact, probably the most powerful fish I've actually seen. That's a big one. So I, I had to wait for him to come in nice and close by doing the old spirit fingers and just tagged him right through the eye. So I really put him down straight away. There were sharks in the area, little reef sharks. So I just bailed back out to shore and um, yeah, it was a good fight. It was a good fight. Oh, fillets are oh, pretty good. Yeah, a so lot of meat. They will uh, have a few dinners, but tonight we'll have the coral trout that we got a few days ago in the Gulf. Mm -hmm, the and one. I'll make a little fish and salads. All right, so it's time to jump in the water. The current is quite strong, but it's still going high tide, so it's perfect condition right now. I'm going with Chris, which really reassures me because I'm still a little bit scared. So we'll take the spare just in case, but we're not going for spare fishing. We're just going a little bit, see what we can find. And Chris did say, if we find a big school of Spanish mackerel, he'll get a shot. Pretty disappointed with myself to be honest when snow came in Chris and I didn't last long. In my defense, the wind just picked up and it's getting pretty rough. Now even Chris admitted that it's getting a bit rougher than you would like, but he still managed to get a fish. <laughs> it's crazy. Just like yeah, I'm just gonna go snorkeling. Next minute you bring back a fish. Good day in the water. Yeah. 56 blue line emperor so five out of five table fish so right through the eyes out the other side so i'm getting uh, better with my aim which i really like because not only do i feel good about the shot but it puts the fish out of its misery really fast so um i'm gonna fill it that up and scale it and then uh, chuck that in the freezer as well good job Happy with that. all right it's dinner time we're making Blue lined emperor crumbed. So Christopher will be my assistant. You apparently like cooking with Chrissy Boys, but what about cooking with Angela? <laughs> so Chrissy Boy is gonna be in charge of the crumbing. And I'm gonna be in charge of the egg mixture. <laughs> And the spread is ready. Some fish and salad. To another good day of adventuring. Cheers. See you tomorrow. Morning guys, so it's even cloudier than yesterday and the wind is up again. Basically just uh, returned back to the spot where we were at yesterday and Angie's making second coffee already, it's only like 8am. 
we've done a big beach cleanup, so we got another whole rubbish bag full of rubbish. So that's like two big trash bags full just from this little stretch of beach, which is sad, but I think the prevailing winds bringing a lot of trash over from Indonesia and maybe a few off like fishing boats and stuff. And then the last piece of trash we picked up was a zinc stick, which I've been needing to get because I got pretty sunburned again yesterday. Unfortunately, it's the tinted kind, as you can see, but that saves me buying some for the foreseeable future. I'm just going to service my gun a little bit. It has certainly seen better days. I don't know if you can tell, but it is smashed to bits. But it's still super, super accurate. At this stage, I'm not going to change it. The actual spear tip is looking pretty blunt. So I'll probably file that up and then I'll be ready to go in. Be nice to get another Emperor if I can because that was so, so good yesterday, all crumbed like that. It was delicious. So if I can get another Emperor, that'll be great. They're a really tricky fish to get near. They stay way out on your peripheral and you've got to have a decent breath hold, throwing up sand, flicking around on the rocks and stuff with my fingers before they'll actually come back in. Usually by that stage, I've got to resurface. But yesterday I got lucky. Um, so hopefully I can again today.
here. Mm. That was your fourth time, so that's when you want in. Beautiful. Good morning. So yesterday we changed locations, changed camping spots and I decided to go for a little dive. You're not allowed to spear we are where we are right now, but you are allowed to still dive and get crayfish and managed to pull up just with my hands an absolute whopper of an ornate cray. It is huge. So we basically shoved it into the freezer just to try and uh, put it out of its misery as quickly as possible to, so that it would go to sleep and then uh, we'll decide when to cook it, but I'll do like a cooking with Chrissy Boy segment. Um, but yeah, it was a pretty cool dive. I was looking under some ledges, getting more confident with my diving and my breath holds, and a quite a big white tip reef shark basically came out of one of the shelves that I was looking under and was getting way too inquisitive around me. So I got out of the water and went in in a different spot and that's when I managed to get the cray. I went in with my cray loop, but couldn't grab it with the loop dropped the loop, grabbed it with my hand amongst all this like sand and rubble and managed to pull them out. <laughs> Dove back down with my other hand, grabbed the loop out and uh, swam back to shore uh, so that Ange could uh, help me with the bucket. <laughs> but it was, yeah, it was pretty awesome. Super, super stoked with it. Yeah, generally you know what to do. Like we have never had such a big crayfish, but yeah, it fits in a freezer, so it's a bonus. <laughs> yeah, just, just. <laughs> really hope you've enjoyed this episode, guys. Please hit that like and subscribe button if you did enjoy it. Really helps us uh, try and sort of grow the audience, which is fantastic. Thanks as always for the awesome support and we'll see you on the next one.